And for what? So your multitude of computers and servers could solve some abstract math equations resulting in the mining of Bitcoin. Worth millions right now, whoopee, but backed by what? Not a mix, zot. What's a dollar backed by since we went off the gold standard? Well, uh, roads, the military, industry, uh, the credit of the federal government, that sort of thing. Yeah, but I get your point. In this video, you will learn what's the Cantillon effect and what do central banks do to increase inequality. Even though inequality has become a central issue here in the United States, rarely people talk about monetary policy as a cause for that. The Fed or the central bank of the US has printed around $7 billion, as you can see in this graph. And Jerome Powell stated the following in a 60 minutes interview simply flooded the system with money. Yes, we did. That's another way to think about it. We did. Where does it come from? Do you just print it? We print it digitally. So we, you know, we, as a central bank, we have the ability to create money uh, digitally. And we do that by buying treasury bills or, or bonds or other government guaranteed securities. And that, that actually increases the money supply. We also print actual currency and we distribute that through the Federal Reserve banks. Focusing almost exclusively on CPI, many economists have overlooked the redistributive effect of money creation on different channels. In the past 20 years or so, central banks around the world have injected the newly created money through credit channels, buying up bonds. The rise of income inequality in the 70s has been largely a product of monetary policy that has been creating a series of asset bubbles, as we can see in this, this and these graphs. Cantillon explained that the first people to receive the newly created money see the purchasing power increase and the last ones see their purchasing power decrease as inflation hits the market. In, in accordance to the Cantillon effect, inflation can increase inequality depending on the channel that it goes to. If it happened that the poorest receive the newly created money, inequality could actually decrease. That's not what actually happens today. Today, money is created and injected into the credit channels. You may know our next guest from The Big Short. He was one of the investors who shorted the housing bubble before it crashed more than 10 years ago. A, a lot of people have made a lot about how rates have been close to zero or below zero for a very long time. Are there any sorts of bubbles that have formed around that dynamic or no? I mean, are there po pockets of bubbles? I mean, QE to me is what I like to call monetary policy for rich people, meaning it raises asset prices. It has zero impact on the economy. It actually has some, ne some very negative aspects to it. In other words, if you're a saver, it's not helping you, it's hurting you. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I don't find QE is helpful to the actual economy. It just causes asset prices to go up. Now, is that a bubble? I mean, the market's not that expensive, so it's not that bubblicious, but it definitely has caused asset prices to go up. When central banks inject money through the credit channels, they make the wealthiest wealthier. And the reason for that is that the wealthiest are the ones that have more assets and they can actually borrow money for cheaper compared to other people. And whenever the central banks are injecting money through the credit channel, they're actually making it credit cheaper and cheaper. And so people that have more assets, they can lever up more easily. And so whenever central banks inject money through the credit channels, they actually make the wealthiest wealthier. 